you a sense of the agenda for tonight. So I'm gonna first walk you through a few slides about MIT Sloan and the Sloan Fellows MBA experience. Next, you'll hear from alumni who will share their personal experience at MIT Sloan and help you to see what makes Sloan such a special place. And finally, we'll transition to your questions for the panelists later in the webinar. So please utilize the Q&A function that is below um, and don't hesitate to raise your hand or to ask questions. Again, this is for you. One thing I would like to emphasize that this evening, uh, we will not focus on the admission process itself, but rather dive further into the impact of Sloan Fellows and the experience uh, that these alumni had and that you can have uh, down the road. So um, thanks, Pam, for putting up the mission statement. Um, MIT Sloan, as well as MIT, is a mission-driven institution. And it's good to just remember that the mission of the MIT Sloan School of Management is to develop principled, innovative leaders who improve the world and to generate ideas that advance management practice. Um, this is something that we live by and that we hope that after your year, um, you will understand why this isn't so important to us. Next slide. Um, so just to give you a sense about MIT Sloan and the portfolio of programs. Um, so people who are here tonight is about the Sloan Fellows MBA. Um, so we're talking about the 12 month program uh, and that's the years of work or the experience range. The average is 10 to 25 plus years. Now, there are other programs that, that will be taking place at Sloan and you might have the chance of being in classes with these students. So there's the MBA early, which are students who just graduated undergraduate who apply early. Then there's the Master of Business Analytics. Then we have the Master of Finance, uh, the typical MBA, the two-year program, uh, something that's a little bit special, it's called LGO. That's a mix of an MBA and engineering. Again, the program we're going to speak about or dive into today, Sloan Fellows, and the EMBA or the Executive MBA. So Sloan Fellows is not seen as an executive program. Uh, this is a full MBA just in 12 months. Next slide. So just to give you a little bit of an overview of the Sloan Fellows uh, program and to highlight um, some aspects of that is that uh, Sloan Fellows or SF MBA uh, is a one year full-time experience. So students are on campus right now and they'll go to June. So I've already heard from some students that I interviewed last year who were already asking for advice about classes uh, in the summer session. Now you can get an MBA or an MS, right? So it's with a thesis in management or management of technology. And I believe Jorge is one of our SF MOTs, right? So he can tell us uh, a little bit about that. Then um, just to give you a sense of the students uh, and the program, this is a rigorous data-driven general management curriculum. Uh, MIT and data are synonymous. Everything we do has something to do with data. So if you don't feel comfortable with data, uh, MIT is not the right place for you. Um, next, um, it's a flexible, customizable curriculum. So part of it, there's a little bit of a core, but the rest are all electives that you choose. And um, I'll ask later on uh, our alums, which, uh, electives they chose and why. Uh, it's an action-oriented curriculum, which means we want you to be using the men's and manas, so your minds and hands, and actually jumping into the ideas that you're learning. This is not just a case-based program. This is getting your hands dirty. Um, in terms of, yes, you're a student at MIT Sloan, but you can take classes across the entire institution, uh, and we hope you do that, right? 
Sloan is part of MIT. We're a small part of a very large research technology and innovation led institution. And we hope that while you're here with us on campus, you'll take advantage of that. Now, when we talk about full immersion and learning environment, um, classes are only part of that. There are clubs, there are extracurriculars, there's a whole lot to do. And so normally uh, with Sloan Fellows, my biggest advice is time management, right? A lot of people will go with their families or their significant others. Uh, so there will be demands, both personal, but you only have one year, 12 months. So you really have to be smart of taking advantage of all of that. And then finally, uh, you'll be part of a global fellows community. Uh, there are fellows all around the world. Uh, there is a good amount of people, not only from Latin America, but from Asia, from Europe, from the United States. What we try to do is create a class that is a little bit of everyone in terms of diversity, in terms of background, in terms of culture, uh, because we feel that ultimately the best way to learn is by learning with others who are both like and different from you. Next slide. So what is the ideal candidate? You saw it in the slide earlier, but we're hoping on students having 10 or more years of experience, that they've done an undergraduate or a bachelor's degree, and that they've had full-time work experience. Clearly, we're looking for leaders uh, who've had experience both in leadership and management, uh, we're looking for people who are committed to a global perspective, right? We don't want everyone to have the same ideas. If you're all the same, you're not going to learn much. Ultimately, if you're all the same, there's no point in coming all the way to MIT, right? We want you to be a little bit different and offer different perspectives. Now, when we're looking at students, we want people who are pushing the boundaries and challenging the status quo, right? If all you've done is just followed the line of everyone else, that's not the type of student that we're looking for. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, MIT and data and quant is just something we're known for, and you will have that in almost all of the classes you will attend. So we want you to be comfortable uh, with quant. Uh, as the alum can tell you, in July, part of it is almost like a boot camp to get people who are leaders who haven't used quant in a couple of years up to speed so that when they get to class in the fall, uh, they don't fall behind. This program is in English. So we want people who are able to read, speak, and write in English. Uh, and finally, uh, we want people who are willing to both improve themselves, improve the world around them, and to make MIT a better place. So we're looking for people who are committed to learning. If you think you're just coming to network, wrong place, right? Unfortunately, many schools, once you get in, they're like, oh, it's gonna be a cake. Um, that's not how MIT and MIT Sloan roll. So uh, get ready for an intense year, but um, a great place. So uh, now I'm going to introduce the most important part of this evening, and these are our alumni. So um, thank you all for being here. Um, I'm just gonna say your name, but I would appreciate if you, uh, each of you uh, give your own introduction. Uh, I don't wanna describe you, but um, some of you I know better than others. Juliana, I actually had the pleasure of both interviewing, accepting, uh, and getting to know her. So I'll start with Juliana and then we'll move down to Ingrid. So Juliana, please. Thank you so much, Lee. It's, I'm so happy to be here. Uh, I joined a little bit like earlier this, this webinar and I was talking with Lee that the first time I had the contact with uh, MIT was like in, a, in an informal conversation with Lee in Sao Paulo and like three years passed and, and I'm here trying to share with you some of the, the experience that I had. So nice to meet you. It's really nice to be here tonight. Um, I'm Juliana. I'm an SF 2020, and uh, before joining the, the program, I was working in a management consulting company. And right after I graduated, I, I decided to change careers. And, and now I'm a partner, and I'm, with, I'm the VP of People Data and Agile for Neon, that is a Brazilian fintech company. 
Thank you, Juliana. And Juliana did exactly what we're looking for, right? Tell me a little bit about your class and year. What were you doing before MIT Sloan uh, and where you were and what you're doing now and where you are? Uh, I know Jorge just told me he's in the middle of a move. So he's in the middle of places, but uh, Jorge, you're up next. You said you wanted people that don't stick to the status quo, right? So we've moved three times in five years. Um, but uh, so Jorge Harvesu, I'm originally from uh, Panama in Central America. This is a South American forum mostly. So most of you know where Panama is. Um, and um, 2018, I did a thesis. I'm not, well, I'm a little bit crazy, but I did a thesis. It was amazing. I'll tell you more about it later. Uh, but uh, uh, prior to joining MIT, I was the country manager for MasterCard for uh, Panama, Nicaragua, and El Salvador. And uh, ever since I took my MLT, sort of built some cred on the technology space, clearly didn't become an engineer, but was given an opportunity to lead a cybersecurity um, solutions team in Latin America. And now we've relocated to New York and by we, I mean my whole family and now having a global role. And, and that's what MIT gave this small town kid from Panama is a global perspective, a global view, and the ability to jump from um, a three million, a country with a population of three and a half million people overseeing our global um, role for uh, for a global multinational like MasterCard. So happy to be here and look forward to talking to you. Excellent, thanks, Jorge. Um, so next, um, Seb Bariga, um, if you could introduce yourself, and just so everybody knows, uh, after the introductions, uh, I'll pin the four alumni and we'll do a Q&A and just lower the PowerPoint so you can uh, focus on them and their questions. So Seb, all up to you. Thanks, Lee. It's good to see you. Uh, hi, everyone. So um, my name is Sebastian Barriga. I go by Seb. I'm originally from Ecuador. Um, fun fact, I applied to, the, to this program in 2010, got a big promotion and decided not to do it. And I'm happy I did it now. So I have 20 years of experience in finance. I started as an investment banker in New York for Salomon, now Citigroup. Um, then uh, that was for 10 years. I went uh, one year to Brazil to be a turnaround CFO for a company that was over a team bankruptcy. That was a lot of fun, very intense. And uh, nine years prior to coming to MIT, I was co-managing a fund for the Carla Group out of Peru. Um, so uh, I would just say this coming to MIT, unlocked opportunities that I thought were not available to me before. And now I'm doing something that was unimaginable to me before, which was, which is starting my own investment firm uh, and doing that with partners and with a tremendous group of people and advisors that I have otherwise not have met if I didn't come to my team. Great, thanks so much, Seb. And so for our last panelist, um, Ingrid, if you could please tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. Nice to meet you. Uh, thank you for the invitation. I'm happy to be here and to share my experience. Uh, previously, to come to the Sloan Fellows Program, I was in Colombia working for BBVA, that is an Spanish bank in the asset management. I was in the uh, legal manager, and I wanted to be part of the change of the, the next generation of finance. Service, financial services. So I wanted to come to MIT and, and learn a, about different technologies and expose myself, as I said, to be part of the change. And then uh, um, now actually I did, a, a, I'm working as a global product manager in digital assets here in Boston uh, for Brown Brothers. I did a career change. Uh, so I moved from being in the legal uh, department and now I'm in the product management. Excellent. So thanks so much. So I'm going to ask Pam if she can stop the presentation. And so um, now we have all the panelists here. So I'm going to ask you questions um, in different groups. So the first group will be MIT Sloan community um, and pathways to the MBA, then a little bit about the curriculum, um, and then innovative hands-on learning experience. And hopefully we can get to rewarding careers and career development, thinking of the CDO. Um, so I'm gonna start backwards this time and, and start with you, Ingrid. Um, I don't wanna put anyone on the spot, but we'll start with an easy question. So 
you've all had great careers before coming to uh, MIT Sloan. So what attracted you to the MIT Sloan program and specifically to the uh, Sloan Fellows MBA? And so for the audience to know, um, I've done interviews for a lot of Sloan Fellows and in Latin America, uh, a lot of the profiles that I've seen fall into three categories. So one of them is someone coming from corporate world who needs a promotion and without an international degree or something that's a game changer, they can't move up. Uh, the second group of people uh, are people who want to pivot. You know, they've done a, a lot of time, 10, 15 years and want something new. Or the third group is someone who's coming from a family office or from a smaller group where they just did not have enough uh, professional academic experience and are coming back to be able to change the way an organization or uh, a fund is moving. So with that in mind, um, Ingrid, uh, what's your story? How did you decide on the Sloan Fellow uh, of all programs and let's say not an EMBA? Thank you. I did my research. I did expose myself like maybe for six years. I went to different um, meetings with different universities. I got to know different programs, but the Sloan Fellows program was the one that I said, this is for me. Like I, I feel that I, I wanted to be part of this group and this community. I like um, the culture. I like the idea that I was able to share the classroom with people that already have a work experience, but as well was willing to learn and change the world. It sounds a little bit cheesy, but in somehow this is why a, a lot of people come here just to change the, the, the dynamic of how we live. Uh, as I, and I said previously, I was doing a career change, but mostly as well to be part of the digital assets to learn about all these changes that the financial services are is having. So that is that is kind of the summary of my story. Great. Uh, Juliana, how did you end up at uh, MIT Sloan? Thank you, Lee. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm an engineer by training. And for the Brazilians who are connected here, I think they're going to you're going to agree with me that MIT is like the dream for the engineers. It's like this school that it's like the highlight for, for everybody. So first of all, it was like, since I was uh, way younger, uh, then when I was applying, I thought that MIT would be like the, the big challenge of my life. Uh, but after that, I think the reason, the main reason was I like getting my hands dirty. I like like building things. I like being involved in everything. And, and I think MIT is super into this, this, this goal. And, and the third reason, is that when I read about the, the different programs and I read like it can be a life changer experience. I, in the beginning, I didn't believe so much. I said, well, it, it, it looks really good, really great, uh, but I'm not sure if it's worth it. Start like swapping for one year of my career and think about uh, dedicating for, for like studying and, and getting another degree. And all I can say after I, I did this program is, is that Yes, it's, that's 100% true. It's a, it's a life changer experience. And after you, you get into MIT, you see that all your expectations, they come in a, in a way bigger uh, dimension. And you have like a, a lot of diversity and a lot of different activities. I, I, I listed here all the things that I engaged with at MIT. And I, it was like Brazil Conference, Brazil Club. Uh, I was a TA. I, I joined a, um, a, some comedies like speakers comedy career. And so, so I think it's, uh, I had really high expectations, but in the end of the day, it's MIT has way, way more than it, we can, we can uh, absorb. And that's for me, the main reason. It's like the year that you can have all the types of experience and, and develop different uh, strengths in just 12 months. So I think it's like really, really meaningful. Yeah, so hold that thought because when I'm going to ask you what you did in your third three semesters, uh, it seems like you did an unbelievable amount. But um, moving to Seb, so tell us a little bit more. So you applied uh, and then you took a 10 year hiatus, then you applied again and showed up because uh, we don't take 10 year applications. Uh, we make you apply again, unfortunately. Well, to me, it was two things, right? The sense of mission was very important. And I was getting into a, um, 
uh, a stage in my career and life that I wanted to uh, achieve significance. And I like the mission of MIT in that sense. And the other thing that I noticed is that technology is no longer an industry, it's a business model. And companies that are adopting that business model are the ones that are thriving. And I needed to be bilingual in those, in the sense that I need to know business and I need to know technology, data analytics. And there's no better place in the world than MIT to find out what's, uh, what's happening. So I took many courses in deep learning, analytics edge, quantum computing, all that I was completely, I would say ignorant before. And now I know the possibilities. I'm no way an expert, but now I can see and I can, uh, I can envision the possibilities that are out there. So that was very invigorating. Great. Um, Jorge, what about you? Hey, um, so I'll say three things. Uh, similar to Seb, I guess, uh, my firm was transitioning into being more of a technology firm. Um, and I was always, I've always been a tech enthusiast, but had no real formal training on it. And there's no better place to go than the one that the place that has technology in its name. Um, so I was number one. Uh, I would say that the second thing, I was 15 years into my career. Uh, so I didn't want to, I wanted a full-time program, but I, I didn't want to go to a place where uh, I, where I was the most experienced individual. So I really valued having experienced individuals in my cohort. And I really enjoyed people that had the experience to push back at theory given by academics. And I really enjoyed academics that were able to take in that pushback and make it it's a constructive conversation. So that's part of what I really enjoyed about um, MIT as I was researching it um, and, and Sloan Fellows particularly. And then the third part uh, uh, I would say is one of my greatest areas for development when I took, I went over to MIT ironically, was that um, I was viewed as someone that was highly individualistic uh, and sort of, they called me in a 360 evaluation that they do to you when, when you enter the program, a person said, it's, you, you think it's a one man show. And I say this in irony because recently when I got my new role uh, a couple of weeks back, the one thing that was highlighted to me was uh, my ability to collaborate and contribute and, and lead by influence. Um, and I can trace all of that back stuff up back to my time at MIT, the culture at MIT is just building and fostering collaboration. It's a skill I took and has changed my career, my career progression. Um, so thankfully I was, uh, I was there to do that. That's awesome, Jorge. And you've led me to my next question. Can you tell me a little bit, because thinking about what you just said, it's not only being in classes, but it's also the community. Can you talk to me a little bit about your colleagues and your classmates? Uh, everybody is from a different year. Um, some people, you know, survived COVID with MIT and MIT Sloan. So talk to me a little bit about the community. Uh, are there any memories or friends that you've maintained or how has the network helped you? Um, so the, the first thing is we made from a, from a purely friendship perspective, made lifelong friends, but there's a friend of mine in Colombia who also his wife became friends with my wife. Uh, and we have an agreement, we travel to each other's home at least once a year. Um, so just with that, there's a friendship that wouldn't have existed uh, uh, without MIT. Our kids are similar ages, so our kids know each other. Um, and that's kind of a, a nice thing to, uh, to be able to build. Um, but the second thing is, uh, on a more, from a more professional perspective, to this day, um, I pick up the phone and call some of my um, former classmates and talk about trends in the industry. So one of the things that I would highlight is one of my um, team members works at Microsoft and um, is doing a lot of work with uh, the gaming division for uh, Microsoft. And that was one of the opportunities that uh, we wanted to get into deeply because of all the payment infrastructure that's being built in gaming. Um, and through a lot of the insights that I was able to get through his vision and to what he was doing in, uh, in his organization at Microsoft, I was able to sort of shape my strategy, shape what we want to go to. And gaming has been one of the fasting, fastest growing uh, uh, payment methods uh, and business areas that we're venturing into here in my market in LIC. So um, it, it links back both from the personal to the professional um, and the influence I get 
not only from the uh, acceleration in my own career, but the acceleration on, on my um, friends' careers and, and, and colleagues' careers and how their insight is now contributing into my day-to-day -day work is, is some of the stuff that happens in this community. It's lifelong. Great. So I'm going to ask Ingrid, because we're going to have about 10 minutes uh, more of speaking with you, and then we'll go to Q&A. So Ingrid, uh, the same question. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the community, lifelong friends, or uh, people that have helped you out along the way? I think this is one of the things that you get most from MIT, a part of the knowledge, is how you learn from others to be better, uh, not only personally, but professionally, but as well as uh, how professionally you can explore uh, different venues when you just share what you're doing uh, or vice versa. Being more concrete with that, we have different uh, groups and we uh, kind of share our experiences and we still keep in touch and uh, we are very active sharing what we are doing and from different industries. And just that brainstorming that used to be in the classroom keeps being up to now. And that is a really good tool to have, to have a brilliant minds thinking differently in a problem that you're trying to solve in your day to day uh, at work. All right, so thinking about problems solving, uh, I wanna move to the flexible and customizable curriculum. So I'm gonna ask each of you, uh, two questions and we can go about it rapidly is one, um, what is something that you learned while Emma at MIT that you still reflect on or use today? Um, and then the second is tell me a class that you took um, that was not in your normal, you know, comfort zone, something you did because you were at MIT and you decided I need to take this class. Um, so uh, Juliana, we'll start with you. Sure. Um, I think I was super into like data and so I took the business analytics certificate I like I got a lot of electives on the data side and it ended up helping me a lot I was not in the data field and after joining in, I, I accumulated the, the data team so now I'm, I'm leading data science and data engineering for, for a fintech company and for a fintech company talking about data it's like it's the heart of, of the business so it helped me a lot and I have a lot of like references uh, on what I, I learned, but more than that, I have references on, on people that can help me. And a class that is not my background, but I, I really like, uh, I love it. And I decided to give it like to me like, as a gift was in microeconomics. I took macro with Rigobon, macro one. And then I love that so much that I decided to take macro two. It has nothing to do with my background or nothing to do with my job and my, my career challenges. But I just enjoy like being there, hearing Rigo Bone talking about like the world and the implications of all the decisions that the politicians were doing. So I think this is like the most out of my comfort zone and nothing related to my career, but it was like a gift for me uh, during this year. Yeah, so uh, for those of you who don't know, the professor uh, Juliana was mentioning is Roberto Rigobon. Um, Roberto won a teaching award this year again. I think he's won it. Uh, maybe a dozen times. He's originally from Venezuela um, and he's really a fantastic and very inspirational uh, professor. So uh, Seb, uh, same question to you. Well, all of my classes took me out of my comfort zone. <laughs> I'll say that. But one thing I had no idea before was entrepreneurship. And uh, to me, this was, you know, this concept that, you know, you go out with a product and then you try to push it to the customers. And MIT produces uh, um, per year one of the most startups in the US or second, something like that. So the tremendous amount of startups that come out. So to learn a discipline approach on how to build a company um, from the problem standpoint and not the product was very valuable to me. And that actually led me to, you know, what I'm doing now, transitioning from private equity into venture capital, marrying what I used to do before with this concept of solving large problems with new technology and new companies or startups. Um, and I think I forgot your other question, but oh, that's okay. We'll skip, we'll move on to Jorge in terms of time. So Jorge, um, yourself, you already spoke about um, how close the community has helped you, but uh, um, what about uh, the classes and the curriculum? So 
Um, anyone who does uh, this course, and you'll end up talking about Duncan Simister and, and marketing and analytics, right? That's that's a superstar course. But I'll highlight three courses that um, that had tremendous impact. I think Seb mentioned disciplined entrepreneurship. To this day, I talk about the decision making process in. Um, in a sales or account management perspective, I didn't have that disciplined thinking before. The second one, um, was that I would with highlight- Bill Alet, guys? Bill Alet, yes, Bill Alet. Um, Bill is fantastic. This, oh, he's amazing, he's a rock star. Um, the second one I would highlight is um, the one with the three lenses. To this day, I have an Excel sheet and I map out power of organization, cultural power, and political power. So that's blue, gray, and red. Um, I actually go through that exercise with my team. It is life-changing in navigating corporate politics. Um, so that to me is absolutely um, important. And then um, the third course, Action Learning, India Lab. It absolutely changed my life. Um, um, a lot of the relationships that I've been able to make at my company is a lot with Indian friends because now, I now understand the culture a lot more. But I learned just being in India, traveling there, um, consulting for Paytm, one of the largest fintechs in the world, um, and just getting hands on of uh, how the startup ecosystem works. That is an experience that I still draw uh, to and, and that clearly changed even um, how I contribute to the world because it, it, it was a program around micro lending for women entrepreneurs. Um, so I'm even venturing into that, but, uh, but India lab or any lab course for that sake is, is absolutely transforming. Awesome. So, um, before I move to Ingrid, I just want to highlight two things that people have mentioned. So one, aside from just the regular courses, aside from, if you want to do a thesis, uh, there are also certificates. Um, so Sloan has, uh, now a fourth certificate, but traditionally for these students, there were three, it was healthcare, uh, finance and sustainability certificate. Uh, now we've added a uh, fourth PM project management uh, certificate. And so these certificates are where students uh, focus in on a certain area uh, that they're interested. The other thing that was mentioned was action learning labs. And if we have enough time, we'll touch on that, but that's where you really get into uh, the men's and manas, you know, putting yourself into practice. And when Jorge said consulting, it's like consulting where the school sends you to a company and it's part of a course. So it's not outside consulting, but it's part of a course where you're learning with faculty and with a mentor or an advisor, and you're going to companies, whether in India or other places of the world, uh, to help them with a certain problem. So uh, Ingrid, question about uh, the courses uh, that you took and uh, if you're using any of it today. So I took the digital currency initiative with the media lab that it was from the fall until the spring. It uh, put me totally out of my comfort zone. I was leading a group of computer scientists from MIT to deliver a um, project with Gary Gensler that today is the SEC chairman. And we were uh, doing a project for Deloitte. So it was a hands-on project learning about the uh, reliability of the consensus protocols of the blockchain. So with computer scientists, and I was leading this team. So it put me out of my comfort zone, but in the end, I, I was able to see how I grow with all my team in all the aspects, in the knowledge, but as well, how I was able to lead something that I didn't have an, an idea what, that, I, that I was doing in the beginning. Um, on the other hand, I did the sustainability certificate. Um, with John Sturman and Jason Jay? Correct. I was with them and I really enjoy it and I strongly recommend it. I think it's something that all of us should be involved with. It, it touched different parts of, of our, our professional lives. Excellent. And as Jorge is showing us, a big part of being a Sloan Fellow is having family there having your significant other, uh, your kids. Um, so how were your families or your significant others uh, received uh, while you were on campus? To me? 
anybody because I imagine okay, I want to hear. very com common or we can ask your son how was his experience of being at MIT and MIT? Hear, to to this day he talks about his time in Boston even though he was too little to remember uh, but I'll tell you something that MIT will give you if you're a parent of small, small children um, Spider-Man's uh, uh, biggest Spider-Man school uh, is MIT. He wanted to go to MIT with MJ uh, and his friends. So now I'm the coolest dad in the world because I went to the same school that Spider-Man wanted to go. So those bragging rights, even Iron, Man. even Iron Man went to MIT. You see, he reminded me. So there you go. Those bragging rights, you won't get anywhere else. <laughs> Anyone else have any good experience of being with family on campus? I, I didn't have a family by then. So I really, now that I have a baby, I totally admire the ones who went there with, with family members. All right. Well, so before we move on to the Q&A, which uh, I appreciate everyone's patience. No, no one has dropped off the Zoom. So what you guys are saying are is important, which is wonderful, um, is I want to ask one question. So if you could think about one word that describes your MIT Sloan experience and the one piece of advice you would give to the attendees joining us today. Um, Juliana, we're gonna start with you because I interviewed you, so I'll put you on the spot. Interrupted the question. Uh... No problem. One word that describes your MIT Sloan experience and the one piece of advice you'd give to the attendees joining us today. Keep on board, it's unique. <laughs> it was unique for me. Uh, and one advice, I think MIT is going to offer you a world of things that you can join. Uh, try not to have FOMO, try to have JOMO. It's like, try to choose what you want to, to, to join because it's really hard to get into everything that is happening uh, and be present, Be try to join this activities, initiatives, and, and, and everything, and try to be there and not try, don't try to do everything because you're gonna, you're gonna suffer in the journey. Excellent. Um, Seb, what would you say? One word and uh, what advice would you give? So uh, the one word is self-actualization, meaning complete realization of one's potential. Um, and the advice is, you know, just uh, there to dream big. This is the place where, you know, you can uh, propose grand ideas and somebody will pick them up, <laughs> either teachers or classmates, and they could become reality. It's actually the right place to, to dream big. Um, Jorge? I, I would say transformative. Um, and the reason I say that, I mean, I graduated five years ago. I'm still doing like, free panelist seminars for the school, right? That's how much I enjoyed my time there because it's, it's truly a transformative experience. And um, I'll give you another example. I remember uh, someone mentioned macroeconomics. I think it was probably uh, Ingrid or, or Juliana um, with, uh, with uh, Professor Cavallo at the time. We were talking about a uh, thinking about the implications of a trade war between the US and China before two years before it happened. Um, so that is to me, the vision that you get, or just a mild example of the vision that you get uh, when you're at MIT, right? And we were already planning and thinking about the consequences. And when it finally happened, uh, the conversations in the team were sort of going back to our responses around it. Um, so again, it's transformative because the way you see the world changes, you personally transform, your family transforms um, and, by my experience and my friend's experience, uh, our careers transform as well. Great, and um, Ingrid? The world will be impactful. And the advice that I, I could give is uh, first, be very, um, you know, time management, like organize your time and know what you want. So learn what you want to learn but as well, share the knowledge and the skills that you have. And finally, explore and expose yourself to different things. So try to balance your time and MIT on those three things. Great. So now we're gonna take some of the questions from the audience with the time we have left. Um, uh, my colleague, Gael, has been answering some of the questions. So if you guys are satisfied with those answers, uh, 
no need to ask them again, but I'm going to start with an easy one, uh, which goes to Jorge. What is the SFMOT? Why do you have MOT, whereas everyone else has SFMBA or SF? Sure. Um, it's management of technology. It's one of the alternatives that you have uh, as part of a member of the Sloan Fellow cohort. Um, and one of the requirements is you have to uh, instead of doing elective courses, you have to sacrifice some of the credits uh, in order to turn in a thesis. Um, and then you end up with a degree that's not an MBA, but a, a management of technology degree. In my case, had to be focused on tech. Uh, so what I did was uh, I was able to uh, integrate particularly my fall and spring courses into uh, my thesis. So the reason I did India Lab is because I was a little bit obsessed till to this day with the demonetization policy that India uh, went through in 2017, which they sort of stopped uh, accepting some legal tender currency in the country uh, to accelerate digital payments. And my thesis was about that. I went to India as part of a course, but that complemented my um, thesis and uh, ended up doing that. And through that, I got an MOT uh, and the whole experience is different. Again, you, you miss out on elective courses, but my um, advisor was Professor Simon Johnson, and he was such an influence in opening doors for me to interview key, even political figures and folks um, in, in the government of India and, and, uh, uh, and, and um, entrepreneurs there, uh, important entrepreneurs there to get the insight that to me was a really enriching experience um, going through this whole thesis environment. But in a nutshell, it's going through elective courses throughout the whole part or doing a thesis is the difference between an MOT and an SFMBA. Great, thanks. So uh, the next question is, uh, a lot has been published around MIT College for AI or the Schwarzman College. How could an SFMBA student leverage that college? Um, so I'm going to throw that at Seb because the college is rather new, and uh, I don't think it was fully established yet um, for some of you all. So, uh, but I know for Seb, it had just started up. So, um, can you help us out there, Seb? Um, I will say this because I did not know that existed, and I think that's very typical of MIT. So vast, has so many things that uh, you know it's hard to know everything, but. Um, I did take a lot of analytic courses at, at MIT. They're available at Sloan and outside. And it was, for me, it also was eye-opening all the possibilities. So analytics edge, I mentioned deep learning, uh, analytics pro seminar. Uh, there's you know, a big list of, of courses that you can take. Uh, you do have to take uh, the basic one, which is DMD, data, data models and decisions. But as a Sloan fellow, you take that uh, during the summer. So you have the basis to, to take the rest. Great. And so I'll just add a little flavor to that. Um, the uh, new AI college is across the university. Uh, it's transversal. And one of the new associate deans actually is a professor who she comes directly from MIT Sloan. So the college incorporates different parts. And the classes, as we mentioned earlier, um, Ingrid had mentioned she took a college at the Media Lab, and one can just as easily take a college, uh, course at CSAIL or at uh, Schwartzman. So uh, one is readily available, the courses are readily available, and one is readily able to do that. Um, a lot more questions popped up, but I want to ask um, a question that someone just put up about uh, are there any clubs or organizations that helped you in your career? So Juliana, you mentioned you were in a lot of them, but was there anything that someone joined or took part in that actually helped them in their professional career, not just in their personal or their enjoyment? I can, I can jump here. I don't think it helped me directly in, um, in anything like career related. But uh, yes, I was a co-president of Brazil Club and it helped me connect with a lot of Brazilians. And now like I hire people or try to hire people from MIT, from Sloan that were my, my, my partners or my colleagues in the club, for example. I was also organizing the Brazil Conference with Harvard and MIT and also opened uh, a huge networking for me in terms of like connections in different sectors and industries. 
So I think it wasn't like, like directly, but it, indirectly for sure, it helped me uh, connecting with some people that are, are key in the market here in Brazil. Anyone else have an example? All right, if not, we'll move on to the next question. So um, one of the first questions we had was, can an international student uh, do an internship after nine months or after finishing the program to join full-time uh, three months later uh, after an SF MBA? So did any of you do an internship or did you uh, all jump into a full uh, job? Seb? Uh, what do you get after the degree? You get something that's called OPT, which is optional practical training. And with that, you can get a full-time job for as long as you want. So it, it opens the door for, uh, for you as employment uh, for one year. And uh, our degree is STEM designated, which also means that you can extend it for two more years. So in theory, if you do analytics, well, actually, no, you just get the degree. You can, uh, you can stay in the US for at least three years. Yeah, so just to um, highlight that is the OPT in the STEM area provides you with the ability to stay in the US and extend your visa so you don't have to ask for a work visa uh, during your OPT. Um, so one other question um, before we uh, finish up is, what would you suggest to the future students how to prepare for their program? Was anything you had not considered before the MBA and which wish you have done or learned beforehand? So anything that you wish you did uh, before coming to campus? Um, that's a strange one for me because uh, uh, I think there is some um, upside to the unknown. Um, because MIT is such a great place for you to go and explore. Um, now you have this AI college. I'm thinking about reapplying. Um, but um, but no, I, I, I'll say this, and I, and, and I want to use this opportunity. We talk about the faculty. We talk about the uh, cohort. And sometimes I think we miss out talking about the staff. Uh, and Lee, you're the face of that now, Pam, the rest of the group. But, but there's a, a lot of support staff in MIT that will make your experience a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable uh, than it would have been if this teams are not there. Um, so an advice I would, I, would, uh, I would give out to everyone is cherish that support staff, listen to them. You'll probably be assigned in a mentor there or sort of, I don't remember if, if their name was a mentor or whatever, but um, someone that, that will guide you um, and leverage that um, staff there that would allow you to navigate, to think about professors, think about courses, think about next steps as you navigate your full year. Um, and something that I would have liked to know uh, is, is just simply understanding that there's tremendous amount of opportunities at MIT, um, explore them, but also use the administrative staff uh, that is a tremendous resource and guidance and uh, very rarely do you run into people that are so helpful as, uh, as the administrative staff at MIT. So, so leverage that resource as well because they're great people and, and, and they really love their jobs uh, and they're fully dedicated. So use that as a resource. Too. Thank you so much, Jorge. Um, anyone else have any advice that they would give people? I can jump here. Uh, I think uh, knowing, knowing what you want from this year can help a lot. Uh, so that I saw some cases of, of people coming and knowing like exactly which path or which certificate or whatever they, they wanted to do. And it was really, really good for them. Uh, I think the more, and this is for life, right? The more you know yourself and the more you know what you want for your life, I think the, the, the more you get from the experience. MIT is going to offer you like infinite options. But if you're, you're, you have it clear, uh, maybe you're going to optimize what you can get from, from the school and from the program for, for this year. Pass on a, um, a, an advice I was given by a Sloan Fellow 19 is if you're an entrepreneur and you want to get the advice of professors, come with something prepared, like a presentation on what's your vision. And you, that vision is going to change because the year is going to affect you positively for sure. But if you have something concrete that you can show people that you thought about, 
then a lot of the professors are gonna open up for you and give you more connections, point you in the right direction, help you square MIT. So that was great advice that I was given that I would not done otherwise. Excellent. Well, so um, as we start to close, I'd just like to thank all of you for your time, uh, for staying uh, through the whole Zoom. Um, so those who are attended, obviously the alumni, we really appreciate you taking the time to be here and speak with uh, prospective students. I'd also like to thank my colleagues in admission. So Pam, uh, Gael, and Trisha and Rayvon uh, for helping out with this. And most importantly is uh, don't forget that the application will open in mid-July. So there won't be any significant changes. Uh, if you wanna learn more about us, please explore our website. Uh, join us at uh, events online. Um, you can uh, apply for other events. Finally, people are allowed to return to campus to visit us. So if you'd like to do that after COVID, uh, not being allowed to, and uh, make sure you follow the MIT Sloan Admission social uh, channels. So we very much look forward to receiving your application. Uh, thank you all for being here and have a great evening and be well. So thanks a lot. Thanks again, all of our alums. Great to see you, Juliana. 